Hello and welcome to another Morales Minute. These are quick tips and sage advice to level up your Web3 game development. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm a Unity certified developer at Morales. I have over 20 years of game dev experience and more than 10 years experience as a digital nomad. I love spending time in nature and practicing sports, as well as drawing, painting, and making music. Together, we'll learn more about Web3 Gaming. Web3 Gaming technology, including decentralization, immutability, and transparency, enables new player experiences. Learn lessons from popular Web3 gameplay design to inspire your game development. Learn more about the Morales Web3 Unity SDK by clicking the link above. And click here to learn about the benefits of Web3 in gaming. And learn more about designing for Web3 in gaming by watching this video. Getting started. Now, as you start playing more Web3 games, one of the unique aspects of playing them is Web3 wallets. These wallets are an important piece to help you authenticate, to sign important transactions during gameplay, as well as holding your NFTs and currency that may go along with the game. One of the standards that you see out there is Wallet Connect. Many of the different branded Web3 wallets use Wallet Connect technology. This is just an easy open standard for developers to develop for and for these Web3 wallets to connect with. And you can see on the right MetaMask, which was one of the popular examples. The process of getting started in a particular game using the wallet depends, but most of them follow a flow something like setting up the wallet, then maybe funding the wallet if the game needs currency to get started. Then you'd start the game, authenticate using the wallet, and then periodically throughout the life of that game, you'll need to sign certain key transactions, things that are on-chain and immutable. Getting started with Splinterlands. Splinterlands is a web experience. So we open our favorite browser, go to splinterlands.com, and get started. I created an account and chose Play Tutorial. The tutorial includes a few different characters who pop up on screen and walk you through step by step. This includes how to set up your card deck and then also have one battle. To prepare for battle, cards are chosen strategically depending on who is your opponent. And then the battle begins. The battle is an auto battler, so you watch passively as your characters take off and do the damage in the order that the gameplay decides. The full tutorial, including everything, takes only a few minutes, but afterwards there's much more to learn. For more insight on the game mechanics and some strategy, let's talk to Tom. Hey everyone, I'm Tom Ionone, Head of Sales and Customer Success at Morales. So when it comes to Splinterland, there's definitely a lot of depth to the battle mechanics in the game. There's a bit of a learning curve, but first I wanted to show you an overview of what the battlefield or the board looks like when you're playing the game. Your first step is going to be selecting a summoner. So the summoner is basically choosing your overall element and gives you access to the corresponding cards to play in the game. The summoner can also apply specific buffs based on which one you choose. And again, this is really specific to your personal play style. Next, you'll select a group of monsters to play within your deck. Each monster has a specific mana uh, cost to play in the game, and each round will have a random mana limit. So the number of monsters that you can play or which monsters you decide to play will change based on the type of game or the round you're playing. The first position is going to fight directly with the first position monster from the other team. And then once that monster is defeated, the second position monster will fill into the first and so on. The game will continue to autoplay until one of the teams is completely defeated. And that means the uh, prevailing team has won the round. There are three different attack types that you'll see on the monster cards. One is melee attack, so that means that they can only attack from the first position. Ranged attack, which means they cannot attack from the first position, but they can attack from any other position in the lineup. And magic attacks can attack from all positions and also completely ignore armor. So typically players will have melee monsters in the front, magic monsters following them, 
and then ranged monsters at the back of the line because again they can't attack once they move into the first position so you want to keep them as far back as possible some other important stats include speed so that's the order in which a monster attacks and also the possibility of them dodging another attack Armor, which takes physical damage first, basically protecting the monster from having its, its health impacted or reduced by an attack. And once the armor is depleted, then attacks will typically start to affect health. And eventually, once health reaches zero, that monster is taken off of the board. Now that we've seen how to get started and learn some of the game mechanics, let's check out the Splinterlands trailer. Welcome to the Splinterlands. Splinterlands is a digital collectible card game based on blockchain technology where the players can collect, trade, earn, and battle with provably scarce digital assets. But what does that mean exactly? Physical collectible card games, like Magic the Gathering, are a lot more than just the game itself. They also include collectible assets that can be bought, traded, and sold on secondary markets. There are often even traders and resellers who earn a living off just buying and selling the game cards. Digital games normally don't have any of that. I'm sure you've played digital games in the past, and you've probably amassed an impressive collection of items in those games. But what happens when you stop playing? Typically, those items just sit there, doing nothing, forever. And it often feels like all the time and money you've put in is wasted. Splinterlands is changing that. We are combining the best of both the physical and digital game worlds. Just like physical game cards, each Splinterlands card is a unique collectible that can be sold, traded, or even rented out at any time. In Splinterlands, you can use your cards to battle in ranked matches and tournaments to win cryptocurrency and other prizes, or if you don't have time to play or you have extra cards you don't use, you can sell them on various digital asset marketplaces or rent them out to other players. All of the cards in Splinterlands are limited in quantity, with brand new monsters and summoners being released as others in their print. Got your eye on some? Pick them up while you still can and get in at the very beginning of a new era of digital collectibles and gaming. See you on the battlefield. Now let's take a step back and look at the Splinterlands design. So traditionally, you address the needs of particular players and player types. You'll know that people coming to your game may be interested in different aspects of the gameplay. You want to consider each of them. Now, with Web3, the opportunities are so rich for someone coming to your experience, they may not even fit the traditional player type, who's there mostly for the fun of it. You also have earners, who are there to play, perhaps for the financial benefits of it, more than the gameplay itself. And then you have the investor type, who may never even open up the game at all, they would either invest through the NFT space, the currency space, or they could even fund earners and players who are in there doing the day-to-day -day experience of the gameplay itself. Now, a traditional game steps through a loop of gameplay, action, reward, and expansion. Let's think about the classic game Pac-Man. As Pac-Man moves through the maze, the actions here are to turn the character through the maze. The rewards are the pellets that the character collects, and for expansion, there's power pellets special pickups that he can get that will change his abilities, temporarily giving him invulnerability where he can chase the enemies. Now with Web3, we have a critical change here. Each time your character is rewarded, you're able to interact with the blockchain. Now this depends dramatically on the game itself, but some things you might be able to do after getting a reward of currency or NFTs or other assets, you could buy and sell those on the open market. You could perhaps stake them for increased income. And then there's governance opportunities as well. For more on this, let's hear from Tom. Hey, it's Tom again. As discussed, Splinterlands is a collectible card auto battler on Hive blockchain. Each round typically only lasts a few minutes, so it's definitely easy to pick up, especially because it's also available on mobile. So if you use your wallet's browser, you can play the game from anywhere. When we look at the game mechanics, the authentication process starts by logging in with your wallet. The action that's taken is battling your opponent and ultimately winning the battle. The reward is dark energy crystals. So as you level up, you'll earn more dark energy crystals, which is the game's utility token. Then you can expand your account by using those dark energy crystals to buy additional cards and packs. 
I also want to make a note that you will need a summoner's spellbook to generate dark energy crystals in the game. Otherwise, you can still play for free, but you will not get those rewards. In terms of currency, the utility token is dark energy crystals, but they do also have credits in the game. They're just called credits. Basically, those are purchased with regular currency, with PayPal, credit card, etc. So that's just uh, their way of allowing you to purchase directly from the game without having to go through the hassle of depositing to your account, switching exchanges, things like that. The governance token is SPS, so that gives you voting rights, it gives you staking abilities, and is pretty standard for, for most games nowadays. I also want to mention potions. You can purchase potions that will be used as you open card packs. So depending on which potion you use, it will essentially increase the chance that you get a legendary drop or a gold foil card. Now that we're inspired by that game, let's look at how Morales Web3 Unity SDK could help us in development. If we look at the generations of the web, we're departing Web2 and enjoying more and more Web3 experiences. Now, it's not a perfect analogy, but let's look at the generations in games. With middleware technology like Morales and Unity Game Engine, we're able to create Web3 experiences with features for our players that have never been possible before. Morales provides a single workflow for building high-performance dApps. It's compatible with all your favorite Web3 tools and services. Now, Unity is one of the most popular game engines out there, and the Morales Web3 Unity SDK brings the power of Morales into your Unity projects. So what does every dApp and Web3 game need? Well, it needs to authenticate users, send and fetch assets, interact with contracts, and observe real-time events from those contracts. Morales does all this and more. To authenticate users with Morales, you use the Authentication Kit prefab. Drag that into your scene and your authentication is handled. To send assets with Morales, we can use Execute Contract function, for example, to mint an NFT. And to fetch assets from the blockchain, Morales offers many options, including Get NFTs and Get NFT Owners. To interact with contracts, Morales offers run contract function for read operations and execute contract function for read and write operations. And to watch for real-time events, Morales is fully compatible with your favorite Web3 tools and services. You can connect Morales to your favorite backend and receive live events in real time, the ones that your game needs. Now that we've been inspired by that game design and seen how Morales empowers game development, what will you build next? Level up your Web3 development skills by building weekend projects. Sign up at morales.io slash projects. Visit docs.morales.io to download and get started. Thanks.